Hello everyone, it's me Shanti and you're watching Biology Nowadays. In this video, we will see a detailed description on the classification and general characteristics of algae, the simplest members of kingdom planting. Welcome to the wonderful kingdom of plants. When I say plant kingdom, the first image that comes to your mind about the members of this kingdom will be somewhat like this. A typical plant with leaves, stem and roots. Now it's time to break this image because the members of the plant kingdom are so diverse in shape and size. The size ranges from microscopic primitive plants with undifferentiated plant body to giant trees with well differentiated plant bodies. Undifferentiated plant body means the plant body which is not differentiated into leaves, stem or roots. And a well differentiated plant body means the plant body which is differentiated into different parts. Sometimes you can see members of this kingdom with some interesting shapes. For example, these stones, I was just kidding, actually they are not stones, they are lithops, often known as pebble plants or living stones. Here's a beautiful timeless video of a flowering lithops. Watch the full video by clicking the link in the description box below. All these different organisms are included under plant kingdom because they all meet the criteria for kingdom plantae. The main characteristics of kingdom plantae are that the members are mostly multicellular eukaryotes. You means true and karyo means nucleus. So eukaryotes means organisms with a true well-defined nucleus. Their cell wall consists mainly of cellulose. They contain chlorophyll in special structures called chloroplasts. The most abundant type of chlorophyll is chlorophyll A. And because of the presence of chlorophyll, they are able to prepare their own food by a process called photosynthesis. Or in other words, they are autotrophic. The members of plant kingdom are divided into five main groups. Algae, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms. In this video, we will be focusing on algae. Have you seen algae somewhere around you? Or let me ask this in another way. Have you seen a green pond? Or this kind of a structure on trees? If you can observe a drop of this pond water under a microscope, you will see a variety of microscopic green algae. Now, about these structures on the trees, they are called lichens. Lichen is a symbiotic association between algae and fungi. Here, fungi provide shelter for the algae. Also, it absorbs mineral nutrients for the algae. In turn, for this help from the fungi, algae will provide food for the fungi. Algae can also grow on animals. For example, this is a sloth. Sloths are the slowest mammals on earth. These lazy creatures will cover only 2 meters every minute and sleep for up to 20 hours a day. Because of this kind of a lazy lifestyle, algae can easily grow on their fur. Sloth fur is a nice place for algae to grow and the sloth benefits by getting a light green color on its fur, which helps camouflage or hide it among the leaves in the rainforest. Now let's move on to the classification of algae. Based on the major photosynthetic pigments present, form of stored food and cell wall composition, algae are classified into three main classes. Chlorophyceae, Pheophyceae and Rhodophyceae. There is a reason why I wrote the name of different classes in different colors. I hope you will find out that reason by the end of this video. First, we will see the class Chlorophyceae. Some common members of Chlorophyceae are the microscopic unicellular Chlamydomonas with two flagella, 
Microscopic but multicellular wall walks, colonies, ulothrix, spirogyra, and macroscopic cara. Macroscopic means you can see it with your naked eyes. These algae are mainly aquatic. The members of Chlorophyceae are called green algae due to their grass green color. This green color is due to the dominance of pigments chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. They have carotenoid pigments also. The plant body is a thallus which means undifferentiated vegetative tissue. As you have noted, the plant body of the members of Chlorophyceae is not differentiated into stem, leaves or roots. The thallus may be unicellular, for example, Clamptomonas or colonial, for example, Wallwax. Wallwax is a hollow ball of 500 to 50,000 Clamptomonas-like cells. Each of these tiny green dots is a unicellular algae. They aggregate and form these multicellular colonies. It's somewhat like the giant robot ball formed by hundreds of robots in the movie Enderan. If you have watched that movie, I think you will never forget Wallwax again. This big ball is the mother colony and the small balls are the daughter colonies. The thallus of some members of Chlorophyceae may be filamentous, for example, Spirogyra. Chlorophylls and carotenoid pigments are localized in the chloroplasts. The chloroplasts of the members of Chlorophyceae may be of different shapes. It may be discoid or plate-like or reticulate, as in Edogonium, or cup-shaped, as in Clamdomonas, then finally, spiral or ribbon shape as in spirogyra. The chloroplasts also contain a roughly spherical body called a pyranoid. Pyranoids are common in algae, but they are nearly absent in other members of the plant kingdom. Until 1980s, researchers thought that pyranoids were the site of starch synthesis. Because when observed under the microscope, they noted that the pyranoids are often enclosed by a starch sheath or starch covering. But based on many experiments and observations, researchers understood that pyranoids are not the site of starch synthesis. Now it is found that the main function of pyranoids is to act as centers of carbon dioxide fixation and thereby increase the efficiency of photosynthesis. In the members of Chlorophyceae, the carbohydrates produced through photosynthesis are stored as starch around the pyranoids. Some algae may store food in the form of oil droplets. This oil can be converted into biodiesel through a process called transesterification. In the transesterification process, the oil, which is a triglyceride, is treated with methanol in the presence of a base catalyst, for example, sodium hydroxide to obtain methyl ester or fatty acid, which is called the biodiesel. Did you know that astronauts carry algae in the spacecrafts? Yes, they carry algae like chlorella with them. Chlorella is a unicellular algae. Chlorella gets its name from the high amount of chlorophyll it possesses. Chlorella contains more chlorophyll per gram than any other plant. The primary purpose of carrying chlorella in spacecrafts is to provide oxygen for the astronauts and to consume the carbon dioxide exhaled by them. Another use of chlorella is that it can serve as a potential source of food and energy. Now let's learn about the reproduction in algae. The algae reproduce by vegetative, asexual and sexual methods. Vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation. This kind of reproduction is usually found in filamentous algae. The filamentous thallus of the algae will break into small fragments. Each fragment will develop into a new individual alga. Asexual reproduction is by the production of different types of spores. The most common spores are the zoospores. They have flagella, 
and because of the flagella, they are motile. Sexual reproduction takes place through fusion of two gametes, the male gamete and the female gamete. These gametes can be flagellated and similar in size as in Chlamydomonas. Such a kind of reproduction is called isogamous. Sometimes these gametes can be non-flagellated and non-motile but still similar in size, for example Spirogyra. Now, if the two gametes are dissimilar in size, as in some species of Chlamydomonas, it is termed as an isogamous. If the fusion is between one large and non-motile female gamete and a smaller motile male gamete, then it is termed oogamous. Example, wall box. Now, we will have a short look at the life cycle of Chlamydomonas. First, we will focus on the essential reproduction. A mature cell undergoes mitosis division and forms zoospores in a structure called zoosporangium. The released zoospores then mature into a fully developed clamdomonas cell. Now let's see the sexual reproduction. Here the clamdomonas will undergo mitosis division to form gametes of two different mating types, plus type and minus type. Here the gametes are of the same shape. So the reproduction is isogamous type. In this picture, the two different kinds of gametes came from a single parent cell. Such a parent cell is called homothallic. Sometimes a parent cell will form only one type of gamete, either plus type or minus type. Then that parent cell is called heterothallic. Now the plus and minus type of gametes fuse to form zygote. The zygote develops into zygospore. The zygospore undergoes meiosis and form zoospores, which will grow into a mature clamdomonas and the life cycle continues. Coming to the second class of algae, the Pheophysae. The common members of this class are ectocarpus, Dictyota, Laminaria, Sargassum and Fucus. From these pictures, you must have noted that they are all brown in color. So, the members of this group are called brown algae. The brown color of these algae results from the dominance of fucosanthin, which is a xanthophyll pigment. Actually, chlorophyll A, chlorophyll C, carotenoids and other xanthophylls are also present in brown algae, but fucosanthin masks the other pigments. They vary in color from olive green to various shades of brown depending upon the amount of fucosanthin present in them. They are found mainly in marine habitats. They are mostly seen underwater. Only the blue-green part of the sunlight reaches those depths and the brown pigment fucosanthin absorbs the blue-green light and increases the efficiency of photosynthesis. There are no unicellular members in this class. But still, they show great variation in size and form. For example, ectocarpus is a simple branched filamentous form, while this macrocystis is a profusely branched form and reaches a height of 60 meters. Large brown algae like macrocystis are called kelps. They form underwater forests or kelp forests. Kelp forests contain a variety of living organisms. The thallus or plant body is usually attached to the substratum, for example, a rock, by a root-like structure called hold fast. They are different from real plant roots because hold fast do not absorb water or nutrients. They have just one function and that is to anchor the algae to the substratum. Brown algae has a stem-like structure called the stipe. Even though they don't have specialized cells like xylem and phloem for water and food transport, the stipes have strengthening tissues and also tubular cells to transport the food through the plant. It also has a leaf-like photosynthetic organ 
call the front or blade. Sometimes air bladders called pneumatoses are present which hold the alga upright in the water. A specialty of these algae is that the cellulosic wall of their vegetative cells is covered by a gummy or gelatinous coating of algin or alginic acid often found in the form of calcium alginate. It is a water holding material. Sometimes you can see algae washed up on the shores during times of low tide. And because algin can retain water for some time, these algal cells will not dry up soon. Algin is a major component of brown algae and is not found in land plants. It is extracted commercially and used as an industrial thickening agent in food and for other uses. In the members of brown algae, the reserve food materials are stored as complex carbohydrates such as laminarin and as mannitol, which is a sugar alcohol. Another use of brown algae is that algae like porphyra, laminaria and sargassum are used as food. Vegetative reproduction in Pheophysia takes place by fragmentation of thallus. Asexual reproduction in most brown algae is by biflagellate zoospores that are pear shaped and have two unequal laterally attached flagella. Sexual reproduction may be isogamous, anisogamous, or oogamous. Union of gametes may take place in water or within the oogonium in the case of oogamous species. The gametes are pyriform or pear shaped and have two laterally attached flagella. Let's see the life cycle of laminaria. The zoospores are produced in structures called sporangia. Sporangia are seen on the blade or leaf-like structure of the alga. The haploid zoospores germinate into an individual alga. This thallus is called a female gametophyte if it produces a female gamete or egg. The other kind of thallus which produces male gamete or sperm is called the male gametophyte. This case is a oogamous type of reproduction. Here the sperm nucleus fuses with the egg and forms zygote. The zygote develops into a young alga which is the sporophyte. It is called sporophyte because as we saw before, when it matures it will produce spores. Let's move on to the third class of algae, the rhodophysiae. The common members of this class are polysiphonia, porphyra, Drastillaria and Gelidium. The members of Rhodophysiae are called red algae because of the predominance of the red pigment R phycoerythrin in their body. Actually, chlorophyll A, chlorophyll D, carotenoids, and phycocyanin, the blue pigment, are also present in red algae. Majority of the red algae are marine, with greater concentrations found in the warmer areas. They occur in both well-lighted regions close to the surface of water and also at great depths in oceans where relatively less light penetrates. Deep water algae have more red pigments while those in the intertidal may be reddish brown, yellowish or almost black in color. As a result, many red algae are confused with brown algae. One species of intertidal red alga named Hypnea specifera is often mistaken to be a green alga as it appears bright green and only the lower parts of the plant are pink. Even though there are some unicellular red algae, most of the red algae are multicellular. Some of them have complex body organization. Many red algae are filamentous and have heterotrichous thallus. Hetero means different and trichous means trichome or filament. Heterotrichous means the presence of more than one type of filament. Heterotrichous thallus consists of two systems, a basal prostrate system and an erect branch upright system. During the development of polysiphonia, first a system of branched creeping filaments is produced. 
and it functions mainly as the hole first. Then these scraping systems of filaments will further give rise to a system of erect and branched filaments. The food is stored as Floridian starch. The grains of Floridian starch are found in the cytoplasm rather than in the plastids. The red algae usually undergo vegetative reproduction by fragmentation of thallus. They reproduce asexually by non-motile spores and sexually by non-motile gametes. Sexual reproduction is oogamous and accompanied by complex post-fertilization developments. Let's see the life cycle of polycyphonia. We will start with the sporophyte thallus. This is called tetrasporophyte because it produces four tetraspores in each tetrasporangium. Some of the tetraspores grow into a male gametophyte or thallus bearing spermatangia, the male reproductive organs, which produce haploid male gametes called spermatia. Singular form is spermatium. The haploid female gametophytic plant body have female sex organs called carpogonium. Carpogonium is the singular form. The carpogonium is a flask shaped body with a basal swollen region containing an egg and an upper elongated neck region called the trichogyne. The spermatia are dispersed with the help of water. A few spermatia become attached at the tip of the receptive trichogyne. Out of many, only one spermatium becomes successful. The common wall of the successful spermatium and the trichogyne dissolves at the point of contact and the male nucleus travels to the female nucleus present at the base of the carpogonia. The fusion between the nuclei results in the formation of cycloid. After fertilization, the carpogonium develops into a structure called cystocarp. Carposporangium and carpospores are developed inside the cystocarp. Diploid carpospore on germination produces the diploid tetrasporophytic plant and the life cycle continues. Now let's see the uses of red algae. Agar, a jelly-like substance obtained from gelidium and gracilaria is used as a thickening agent. It is used in bacterial cultures and preparations of ice creams and jellies. In Indian cuisine, it is known as China grass and is used for making desserts like this delicious pudding. Another substance called keraginans, extracted from chondrus crispus, is commonly used as a thickener and stabilizer in milk products like this chocolate milk and some processed foods. By the way, have you heard of sushi? Sushi is a Japanese dish made of rice and a variety of ingredients such as seafoods and vegetables. Sushi is wrapped in sheets called nori sheets, which is made of algae. Nori is the Japanese name for edible seaweed species of the red algae of genus Pyropia. So, that's all about the three main classes of algae. But before we conclude, let's have a look at the general characteristics of algae. Algae are chlorophyll-bearing, simple, thalloid, autotrophic and largely aquatic organisms. They occur in a variety of other habitats such as moist stone, soil and wood. Some of them also occur in association with fungi and animals as we saw already. The form and size of algae are highly variable. The size ranges from the microscopic unicellular forms like clamdomonas to giant kelps. The algae reproduce by vegetative, asexual and sexual methods. Vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation. Asexual reproduction is by the production of different types of spores. The most common are the soup spores. Sexual reproduction takes place through fusion of male and female gametes. It can be isogamous, anisogamous and oogamous. Algae are useful to us in a variety of ways. At least a half of the total carbon dioxide fixation on earth is carried out by algae.
through photosynthesis. They form the basis of the food cycles of all aquatic animals. Nearly 70 species of marine algae including porphyra, laminaria and sargassum are used as food. Water holding substances like algin obtained from brown algae, agar and carrageenan obtained from red algae are of commercial importance. And finally, algae like chlorella is used by space travelers. Now, a question for you. Do you know what the scientific study of algae is called? Type in your answer as comment. And that's all for this video. In the next video, we will learn about bryophytes in detail. Until then, stay tuned.